On an average weekend, there are about you know, 1,000 people coming in every Sunday evening for the congregation. Uh, on special days such as today, we expect about five, 6,000 people over the entire day. The special day being celebrated at the BSS temple is New Year's. But this holiday is very different from the traditional American version. It's not something that you would do on December 31st here. You know, you wait for the ball to go down and get the champagne out and celebrate. You don't get that. It's not like that. New Year's Day usually falls in October or November on the Hindu calendar. It is preceded by the festival of lights known as Diwali. This is a time to see friends and family, to fast and to feast, to renew oneself spiritually, and to offer the Lord an incredible banquet of food. There were 800 different types of dishes offered to the Lord today. There were a lot of desserts, there were main course meals, there were at least 15 different types of breads. All of them were vegetarian, completely vegetarian dishes, and it's amazing to see the kind of variety you saw today. The significance of food behind Diwali, and especially on the New Year, is to offer to Lord everything that we possibly eat, so that it's all blessed by Him, and then we partake of it, so we eat blessed food, and that kind of renews us spiritually too. The BSS Temple is one of the largest Hindu places of worship in America. It is run by volunteers who prepare lunch and dinner for the congregation every weekend. Men and women stay on separate sides of the temple so that their entire focus is on prayer. This religious mandir is more than a place of worship. It really is a cultural home for the Indian community where people also study dance, music, and language. There's a lot of good things about this culture and it's very, very important for us to keep it alive and these children here to feel at home. While the majority of Indian immigrants to New Jersey settled in Middlesex County, the Indian community is developing a strong presence in several locations throughout the state. Many miles to the south, a small Hindu mandir in Berlin houses an impressive collection of paintings depicting gods and goddesses. These vivid works of art were all created by one man, Narendra Amin, a former civil engineer who worked by day and painted by night. I had painted all the gods and goddesses, but uh, I always wanted to have some sort of our scriptures so that our children should know about our culture and about our heritage. The scripture paintings developed into a long mural depicting two great epics from Hindu mythology, the Ramayana, which is the story of the god Rama's adventures over a long period of exile, and the Mahabharata, an intriguing tale about two warring families. India's cultural traditions are practiced and appreciated by more than its native people. Dr. Alan Miner traveled to the subcontinent to study music and ended up staying for 10 years. Well, music and dance are thriving in India. The sitar is uh, learned orally, that is, there's no written music for it, so you learn by a process of imitating the teacher over a long period of time. What I was playing on the sitar is classical music. Classical music is performed in concert halls, and it's based on a melodies called ragas, which are not written down, but these are learned and memorized and improvised on. So there are about 200 ragas that classical musicians use to perform. The sitar does have a unique sound. It's a combination of all its strings, its resonant strings, and its flat bridge, and its ability to pull the string 
from each fret position so that you can slide from note to note without, without uh, jumping along the frets. It's a very, quite a unique instrument developed in India. Another distinctive sound of India comes from the country's most famous drum, the tabla. Ustad Tari Khan is an internationally known tabla wizard. Concert tours have taken him to all continents and almost every major city of the world. He has now settled in New Jersey and teaches at the Katak Art Center with his wife, Tanushri Sarkar. I love, <laughs> I love this instrument. You can play anything if you, if you have capacity, if you learn from good guru, good teacher, then you can mm, uh, do it any creation. is a renowned artist in her own right. She is an award-winning dancer and vocalist who specializes in the classical Katak dance of northern India. Out of the five classical dances of India, this is the, the most uh, difficult dance, but I feel that once you love to do something, then um, it's a challenge and you just hooked into it. You love to do it. Katak combines precision movement and mime to tell mythological stories. 600 bells ring out every step and spin. The couple perform as one when they are together on stage, improvising on age-old moves and melodies. dance and singing to an ever-growing group of dedicated students. It's like a religious experience, it touches your soul. Uh, it's like a meditation, you know, it relaxes you, unstresses you. It's wonderful. I don't want the lesson to end. Of course, my favorite part of Indian culture is the cuisine. It can be fiery hot, aromatically sweet, or a subtle combination of the two. Many delicious recipes developed in royal courts. Here, art and food were considered equals, and the royal chef was a man of power and prestige. At one time, only a scattering of Indian restaurants existed in New Jersey and spice-starved fans had to search for them. Now, many new restaurants are opening up, each featuring its own unique style of food.